It's not quite autumn yet, but it's getting there. I'm seeing Halloween decorations all over the place, and I thought it was time to really dive in here and talk about the drinks of spooky season. <laughs> First up, I want to talk about a drink I made a couple years back that I think is uh, emblematic of the autumn everywhere in the United States at the very least. It's the pumpkin spice latte, but I made a pumpkin spice cocktail, okay? To make it, you have to make a pumpkin spice syrup, and that's the main thing in this drink. I used a full can of pumpkin puree. Uh, I did another 29 ounces or 860 milliliters of water. You can take it up to 30 ounces, I'm not going to tell. Uh, another 30 ounces of demerara sugar, four teaspoons of dried ginger root, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then like seven or eight cloves. Cloves. And then like seven or eight cloves. Uh, bring that to a boil, let it cool, and then strain it through a cheesecloth or a nut milk bag if you have one. Uh, to make the pumpkin spice cocktail, I would take a coffee liqueur that has a lower amount of sugar, something like Mr. Black or St. George's NOLA coffee liqueur, and combine that in equal parts with our pumpkin spice syrup. It's not that syrupy, it's more of a stuff. Add ice and shake it all up, and then top that with whipped cream. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy it a great deal if you're into the Han Solo look. You know, about the, the Han Solo look, the, the best and the... Don't worry about it. Maybe you're thinking about drinks for like Halloween. Maybe you're thinking about drinks for the spooky, spooky season, right? Not just autumn, not just brown leaves, not just warm sweaters and walks in a, a, a turning forest or sitting by the fire. No, maybe you're thinking about like Halloween and you want some real actual spooky drinks. Um, I've done a bunch of those on the show over the years. One of which I was personally a huge fan of was my Death Becomes Her Youth potion. This was built in a mixing glass. It's got a half an ounce of Chambord, a half an ounce of Maraschino liqueur, two ounces of a London dry gin, uh, an ounce of lime juice, one bar spoon of St. Germain elderflower liqueur to make it taste like spring. And I know what you're thinking, this is the autumn cocktails, this is spooky season cocktails, but you must remember. We are creatures of the spring, you and I. Uh, you're not gonna need it, but if you really wanna get the look right, you want a pinch of pink luster dust, and then that'll get up our swirly, twirly pink stuff. Add ice and stir and strain that into the glass or potion vial of your choice. And, uh, you know, give me everything you have so that you can live forever. One of my favorite drinks for this time of year is a hot toddy. I have made a hot toddy on this show so many times. Um, in fact, the first time I did it, people were a little annoyed because my preferred recipe is the one from the Jerry Thomas Bartender's Guide. It's very, very old. A lot of people learned a different hot toddy. I had to do a whole episode kind of exploring other hot toddy recipes as a result of that. I still prefer the Elder Hot Toddy, which is simply two ounces of the bourbon of your choice, two bar spoons or so of Demerara sugar, three ounces of boiling or really hot water stirred up with a twist of lemon. Technically, when you put a twist of the lemon on it, it's called a whiskey skin. Um, this drink is very simple. I promise you, you're going to like it. It's going to convert you. This is an excellent drink. It's way more complicated than you expect it to be. It's incredible. Uh, some people add bitters to it. I don't think it's necessary in this case at all. I think you're just kind of burying it a little bit. Uh, give it a try. It's one of my favorite drinks of the season, and I may even have one later today. This time of year is great for horror movies, whether they are the highfalutin kind or the very, very campy kind. I am a huge fan of a movie called Reanimator. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. In either case, I hope you watch it. This movie is based on a short story by H.P. Lovecraft, and it centers on a serum that brings people back from the dead. This, of course, results in zombies. So I made a drink called Reanimator Serum, and we made it by combining an ounce of Midori, an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, and an ounce and a half of matcha-infused vodka. You can make that matcha-infused vodka by taking like 500 milliliters of vodka, a big spoon full of matcha powder, whisk it together like crazy, and immediately strain it through a coffee filter, you will get your matcha-infused vodka. This drink is bright green. You can put it in a syringe and leave them out at your Halloween parties. Uh, and it tastes, I think, really delicious. I think that it is sweet and balanced with this kind of matcha earthy bitterness. It's just right. And also, uh, matcha's got quite a bit of caffeine in it, so it will reanimate you. Ugh, clever boy I am. Uh, 
If you prefer your spooky season to be a little bit more spoopy, which is a term I don't hear much anymore, but I was a couple years ago when I did an episode with a drink called a Sanderson Sisters Slammer, where I made the potion from Hocus Pocus. That episode was viewed by 12 people. It was criminally underwatched, so I hope you'll check it out now. You can make this drink for a Halloween party or just enjoy it while watching the movie this year, as I'm sure you're bound to do as on an annual basis like I do. Use a half an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of orgeat, one ounce of Midori, because Midori is green, and a lot of these drinks need to be green. Use an ounce and a half of gin, like a London Dry Gin, and a half an ounce of Ray and Nephew Overproof Rum, which is gonna bring a lot of flavor and oomph to this drink. Shake and strain that, I think, into a potion bottle, but really, you can't go wrong. Anything you can drink it out of is gonna taste about the same. Uh, <laughs> and there you have the Sanderson Sisters Slammer. I love that movie. I love that movie. I haven't seen the sequel, but my understanding is that it's not very good. I haven't seen the sequel. But I, don't, I don't think it's any good. But I really like the first one. That's good. I feel like every drinks list should include something tiki on it, and classic tiki drink, the zombie, is an obvious, perfect Halloween-ish drink. Drink was invented by Don Beach. And famously, he would only ever serve a customer two of them because they would put you straight into the ground and, and, and leave you there. It's a very inebriating drink. You're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, right? You're gonna use a quarter ounce of grapefruit juice. You're gonna use a quarter ounce of a cinnamon syrup. You can make this by making a two to one simple syrup, two parts sugar, one part water, and kind of steeping cinnamon sticks into it, just letting them hang out for a long time. Or you can kind of cook them together. They're all, you know, however you wanna go about that. You need one teaspoon of grenadine, and I do recommend that you use your own homemade grenadine, which is, again, pretty easy to make. It's more or less simple syrup where you replace the water with pomegranate juice. Pomegranate juice, did you know that? It's not cherry. Grenadine isn't cherry, it's pomegranate. You're gonna need a half an ounce of a liqueur called Velvet Falernum. It shows up in a lot of tiki drinks. If you're into tiki stuff, you've already got a bottle. And if you're interested in tiki stuff, pick up a bottle. You can actually order it at Curiata, at drink.curiata.com. You can use the link in the pinned comment or up here in the corner. Uh, they will ship it straight to your door, and you know what? They have a partnership with How to Drink, and so when you order from them, it's good for me. So go and check them out. Thank you. You're gonna need three different rums to make this drink. You're gonna need an ounce and a half of a blended aged rum. When I made it on the show, I did Plantation Grand Reserve. You're gonna want an ounce and a half of an aged column still rum. I happened to use Havana Club 7-year, but there are plenty of other options. Um, look at Don Q. Yeah, I would say look at Don Q. Look at Don Q. Uh, you're gonna need an ounce of an overproof rum. Now, for some reason, when I did this episode so long ago, I used Smith & Cross, um, but really, that's not really overproof. The recipe should be made with like a Lemon Heart 151. That's where it's at. You're gonna need a dash of Angostura, you're gonna need a dash of Absinthe, and you're gonna shake that up, dump it with all of its ice straight into the glass you're gonna drink it from, and garnish it with some fresh mint. That is a zombie is a fantastic drink. You're gonna like it. I wanna make one tonight, but unfortunately I don't have all the ingredients. I was just doing the math in my head and I can't have a zombie tonight unless I go to the grocery store and buy some grapefruits. I don't know if you've heard me say this or not, but I have a Patreon uh, that helps me pay for this show. Uh, over there, there are all kinds of things. There's like exclusive behind the scenes content. I will do occasional updates about things that are just going on off camera. Uh, there are extra episodes occasionally. There are sort of addendums to episodes. There's a pin club where we send you a pin roughly quarterly and they're always fun designs, sort of like in jokes about the uh, show. If you wanna help out the show, continue to exist. If you wanna help me make the show and if you just want more of it, go ahead and check out our Patreon. There's a link in the pin comment below. There's gonna be a link up here in the corner Corner. I would appreciate it, and if it looks like something you're into, then go ahead. And if it's not, hey, no hard feelings, that's fine. But I want to move right along to another horror movie drink, my favorite horror movie of all time, Return of the Living Dead. And if you haven't seen this movie, please see it. You really owe it to yourself. Actually, we talked about it in one of the first episodes of Midnight Local, the podcast Meredith and I do, uh, which is about movies. And now I feel like I'm just plugging the plugging the plugging, and I'm sorry, but it's just the way it happened. But I love Return of the Living Dead. I think it's one of the most perfect movies ever made. It is fun and genuinely frightening. And it was written by Dan O'Bannon who wrote Alien. I mean, you can't go wrong. And it's punk rock, man. It's a punk rock movie. It's a good movie. There's a character in this movie called the Tar Man uh, who comes out of a barrel of sludge and sets off our zombie infection. And I made a drink sort of in his honor. So you're gonna need an ounce and a half of Mr. Black you're gonna need an ounce of Amaro di Angostura, which is an Amaro that I really enjoy, which makes sense because I like Angostura a lot. And you're gonna need an ounce of a dark rum. I like Plantation OFTD here. You're going to heat up all of that together in something that 
Jeffrey Morgenthaler invented called a bartender's bain marie or bartender's water bath, where you take um, your short tin, you put your ingredients in it, you take your big tin, uh, you fill it with like hot or nearly boiling water, and then you float your short tin into that and stir that with your bar spoon. This will heat up all of your alcoholic ingredients without needing to water them down with hot water. Then take that lovely mixture and pour it over some vanilla ice cream and make an affogato out of it. No, oh, it's good. And then you get like the, you know, the tar man. It's like all melty and stuff. There's a lot of melting effects in this movie. There you go, that's a tar man. I think it's delicious, you're gonna love it. <laughs> I do, it's really fun. It's good stuff. Just seasonally, just seasonally, I think chocolate and mint and hot cocoa and hot beverages in general are on the money. You can't go wrong. There's a peppermint patty. You can build this in the glass. This is a simple, delicious treat to enjoy on a crisp autumn night. You're gonna need three ounces of hot cocoa and use the hot cocoa of your choice. You're gonna need an ounce of creme de cacao. I like Tempest Fugits. You're gonna need a quarter ounce of creme de menthe. You're gonna need an ounce of peppermint schnapps, which is a little bit different because it's high proof, whereas creme de menthe is like a sweeter, lower proof thing. Stir that all together and garnish it with some grated cinnamon. That's my preference here, or just cinnamon in general. Fresher is better. And you are in Happy Town. Just a sweet, chocolatey, peppermint patty, minty piece of magic. Mm. Chocolate and mint, they're a good combo. In a similar vein, I think an Irish coffee is an absolute classic for the season. It's perfect. In fact, it was a drink that was invented to kind of warm the weary bones of some air travelers uh, at an airport in Dublin, and I forget the name of it right now. It's the famous airport up there, right? Now, two sugar cubes. Joe Sheridan and the Buena Vista, they use sugar cubes. They actually use, I think they're CA brand. I don't have those. I don't also have Domino Dots, which would be more appropriate probably, but I do have these Demerara sugar cubes, which is actually going to be interesting because at the Dead Rabbit, they do use a Demerara syrup. And I think that if I go with the smaller ones, we should be fine, it should be about the same. My coffee maker's in a different room. It's a pain in the butt to bring it down for all these little coffee episodes. I think I'm gonna start doing it with a thermos. I don't know, you probably, you might object, maybe not. We'll find out, but it's fresh coffee. I just made it, it's real hot. Don't worry about that. And it just makes my life easier. Okay, so six ounces of this, here we go. Oh yeah. Pours like a, pours a treat. And six, perfect. Uh, and so one and a third ounces of Tullamore Dew. One, most of one, and a third. It's an unusual measurement, a third. You don't get a third in a lot, but give that a stir to get the sugar nice and dissolved, which being a Demerara might take a little extra than with the white, but that's okay. Not much, I did it. Into the shaker, I will pour some heavy cream and just dry shake that. It's easy to go too far on this one because what happens is you'll turn this into butter in a hurry. I have found, I don't know. It doesn't take much. If you go too far, it dries, dries out either because really the fat content here should be so high in this heavy cream that this just floats. And then just fill it up. I'm very excited about this, and uh, and you're, that's a that's a that's a that's a real joy. An Irish coffee made properly is. Um, I think that there needs to be a little bit more cider representation in this episode, and of course you could spike some hot cider, which is a very American thing to do, because our cider here in the U.S. tends to be non-alcoholic, which is what I think in the U.K. they call cloudy apple juice. There is, however, a more appropriate earlier beverage that involves cider. It's a very simple drink. It's called a stone fence. It was a very popular in America in the colonial times. It was a favorite of, um, oh, who's that guy with the furniture store named after him? Ethan Allen. It was a favorite of Ethan Allen and his Green Mountain Boys. It's two ounces of bourbon topped off with cider, and I do mean cider cider, hard cider for Americans, but cider for people in the UK. It's gotta have some, it's gotta have alcohol in it. If you make this drink with sweet cider, non-alcoholic cider, it will be bad. Make it with hard cider, it's good. I think it really benefits from a garnish of mint. I think that's huge for this drink. That extra little olfactory effect really improves it. And would not have been period appropriate to the colonial America, but a few dashes of Angostura bitters in this drink really elevate it to kind of a divine status. It, it takes it over the top. It doesn't bury anything. Everything is, if anything, it makes it all taste more like itself. 
Great drink for the season. Very simple, very easy to make. And we get some cider in there. I was actually picking apples today and we wound up with too many. So now I've got to learn how to make an apple pie, which I'm going to go do now, actually. So thank you guys so much for watching the show. You know, occasionally there's an episode like this where it's like, you know what? I have done those drinks a lot and there's really no new information, but you know, there's always new people watching the show. And so it's great sometimes to take a folio of drinks and sort of present them to people who have come by the show recently. So maybe this is newer information for you. At the very least, it is a convenient place for all of your autumnal beverage needs. If you like the show, I've been making it for a very long time, as this episode should have served to explain. And if you're looking for more of it, here it is. Uh, and also check out my podcast and my Patreon. And I will see you soon in another episode of How to Drink.